I'm Rich Nagel. I'm the director of marketing for Bendix Charging, which is air treatment, compressors, uh, powertrain components. So if you've been in the booth today, one of the first things you notice, obviously, is a lot of advanced technologies on braking systems, safety systems, air disc brakes, um, different levels of automation for the vehicles. But behind all that automation, uh, we need compressed air, right? So one thing hasn't changed in the brake system, and that's a need for uh, dry, clean, compressed air. So, you know, how do we get that? And that's evolving as trucks become more technologically advanced, right? They need uh, a better quality of air supply. So one thing, you know, if you're a truck owner, uh, air dryers, air system is something that requires regular maintenance. It's not something you can just ignore for years and years. Uh, you do have to update, replace components, change cartridges out. And a lot of when you have to do that depends on what type of truck you have, how you drive it, uh, age of the compressor, number of axles, air consumption. So there's never really a hard and fast rule about maintenance. It's, it comes down to really um, your vehicle and how you utilize it, but it will require maintenance at some point. Now, if you go back about 20 years ago, most trucks had a simple air dryer like a Bendix 89. It's kind of a legendary product in their industry. And this is the, uh, the dryer cartridge, right? So this is what's inside that 89 dryer. And we always like to joke, you know, the thing that people love about this product is it eats rocks. It literally is a very durable product. It's lasted for years and years. Um, you know, one of the, the aspects to this, there's uh, the, the desiccant, which is actually what's inside the cartridge, um, is what removes moisture from the air, and then of course it expels that moisture in what's called the purge cycle. So in an 89 dryer, there's about four pounds of desiccant. It's a pretty significant amount of material. Um, the good thing about this type of product, it's very durable, and there's still about two million vehicles out there today with this type of a product. So this is tried and true, um, and there's a lot of desiccant, and that gives you, that gives you some allowances for contamination, life, all those. But, but that's been changing over the course of time. So if you look at when dryers came out back in the 70s, they had really a very simple task, and that was just to remove water from getting into the service tank. So a dryer very simply takes compressed air from the compressor, the water molecules adhere to the desiccant inside the cartridge, and that takes about 40, 50 seconds. We build up air pressure in the wet tank, and then when we built up enough pressure, we purge the system, we remove the water, it goes out through a purge valve. That happens thousands and thousands of times through the life of the vehicle. Um, so, you know, when those dryers were put on trucks originally, they had one simple job. That's to keep water out of the service tanks and not in your air brake valves where it could freeze, right, and you get brake freeze up or where it can start to hurt seals or flood valves. I mean, sometimes you open up the valves and there's water inside of them. So that was the basic job. Now, some things have changed as trucks become more technologically advanced. We still need dry air, but we also need uh, a higher level of quality air. So, you know, one of the first things we tell people, and one of the first questions I get asked is, how long does a, a air dryer last? Well, outside of corrosion and metals, the desiccant has really, I won't say infinite life, but the desiccant can last in a controlled environment for years and years. And even with lots of cycling and lots of pressure applications, because desiccant theoretically is very durable, and if it's clean, it will operate for a long, long time. So when we test up in the lab, if we test it in an ideal situation, that desiccant can last for years. Now, in reality, though, trucks don't have clean air, right? They pull air in from the outside, or it goes through a turbocharger, and during that process, the moisture in the air, right, the humidity in the air, gets pulled into the compressor, it gets compressed. While that compressor is reciprocating, it's drawing oil in from the engine crankcase, and then it passes that oil into the airstream. And then you have some EGR uh, emissions going back to the, uh, the air system. So all that stuff is mixed in with air when it gets to the air dryer. So the air dryer is not just moving clean air with moisture, it's got dirty air, it's got air with oil, it's got air with particulate contaminants. So we want to keep that from getting into the brake system too. So really today now we have two jobs. One is to keep the moisture out of the system, but also to keep the air clean. Because if we don't have clean air, 
we start to get problems with component failures, and some of those are very expensive. Um, so, you know, historically we had this kind of a basic air dryer. They still work great, but over time, because of a lot of requirements, right, to make the systems lighter, more flexible, more standard, about 20 years ago, air dryers started coming out to the market, which use a spin-on cartridge. And it looks very much like an oil spin-on cartridge, right? That's what most people think of it. It's a kind of a similar design. And there's good and bad to the spin-on product. The good is it's standardized, right? So everybody in North America, at least, uses the same interface. It's a 39 millimeter thread. So I can take a competitive product and I can put a Bendix product on or vice versa. Um, I don't have to keep six different types of cartridges on the shelf if I'm doing service. So, you know, that's one of the good things. One of the things that's changed, though, is, you know, in the days where we used predominantly things like the Bendix 89, we had four pounds of desiccant. The cartridge has about 1.8 pounds. So you get a lot less capacity, right, in terms of desiccant. But from a, a moisture removing standpoint, brand new, this removes as much moisture as this. So, you know, when I talk to engineering about, okay, you know, what's the benefit of having four pounds of desiccant if it doesn't remove twice the moisture? The answer was, well, back in the day, truck compressors were pretty dirty, right? Especially big twins. Uh, they could pass up to a liter of oil a year or more. That's a significant amount of oil that's going into the air system. So where's the first place the oil goes? In here. So that four pounds of desiccant acted a little bit like a sponge almost, right? It would absorb the oil or the oil would coat it. And then we get these cartridges back, right? And of course, the desiccant inside would be covered with oil. And what that does is that that reduces the capacity of desiccant to remove moisture. So you get a couple of things that happen. One is you're no longer drying the system the way you're supposed to. And at some point, you get so much oil in here that it starts passing into the brake system. So you start opening up your brake valves and you start to see oil contamination and sometimes it's mixed with water and so you get a highly acidic kind of a mix and you start to put you know engine emissions in with that and we start to see valve failures. We, we get them all the time. You just open them up and there's a slurry of sludge inside that gets in through the air dryer. So when we go to spin on cartridge we have a lot less desiccant. So there's some things that are important about maintenance that you have to pay more attention to than you did with the old style, you know, larger capacity cartridge. Um, the other, you know, side effects to standardization is, well, anybody can make now uh, a product that's not a patented interface. And so what that's done is created a pretty significant aftermarket, especially on the value side. And what I find when I talk to fleets, dealers, WDs, you know, people look at this and say, well, it's all the same, right? Desiccant's all the same, and it's not. I mean, if you start to really get into the, the engineering performance of desiccant, you start to realize there's some significant differences on different suppliers. And I like to tell people that even what's considered good desiccant for some applications doesn't work on a truck. Because on a truck, that desiccant is compressed, it's vibrating, it's pulling in moisture, it's pulling in oil, it's pressure cycling thousands and thousands of times. So the desiccant takes a beating that it might not take in like a gas line drying application or an air conditioner application. So it's really critical that we use the right kind of desiccant. Um, so with that, now we have these three types of cartridges. And I'll start off with this first one. This is what we call our OE grade. It's a standard cartridge. It's standard in that the only thing inside here is the desiccant. There's really no additional filtration. There's a little filter in here to, just to take some particles out, but it, its real job is just to remove moisture. That's it. And the other reason it's, uh, we call it OE grade because this is the product that comes on with the dryer when it's brand new. So when you get your truck off the production line, you're going to see this product. And when you want to replace it, you're going to typically buy this product, especially while the truck is under warranty. And you know the, the main difference with this type of a product the desiccant inside, let's say this old 89 cartridge, or the spin-on is identical. And it's a, it's a desiccant we've worked with for over 20 years. It's proven in trucking, and that is it's very durable, and it does some things really well. One is not only does it remove moisture, but it stays intact over time. It doesn't fall apart, which some desiccants do, unfortunately. So, you know, what happens is 
when you get your truck new, you have an extended warranty or whatever your warranty protection is, you're going to go back to the, to the original manufacturer buy this product. So with this type of a product, you never have to worry because you get a premium product, brand new, the factory stands behind it. If you have an issue, you know who to call. So, you know, that, that uh, product is pretty well understood out there. Now, what happens is when the truck gets older, you're getting ready to sell it, you're the second or third owner, you're really interested in maybe trying to save some money, right? So you, you call your reseller, right? And you get a price for the Bendix or one of our competitors. You're like, wow, I'm really, you know, it's expensive. I know it's the right product. So to help with those customers, we released what we call this green cartridge, the GC. And this was released just a few months ago, and it was really targeted for second, third owners, people in a resale cycle who want to have the reassurance of buying a product from someone like Bendix, and they know they can trust and count on it, but they want to save some money. So the GC is, is a, it's a premium value product, right? It, it lets people buy a lower price product when the truck is out of warranty, and they don't have to worry about what's inside. So, you know, to that, to kind of explain what's inside the green cartridge, Bendix remanufactures a lot of our products, right? A lot of the things that you see here today are remanufactured. This 89, for example, we sell this in a remanufacturing unit. We bust it apart. We take the desiccant out. We reprocess the desiccant, put it back together, and we sell that usually as a much lower price than brand new. And we've been remanufacturing desiccant for over 20 years, so we're pretty good at it. We process a lot of it. And just to show you what happens with desiccant, so here in my right hand is uh, remanufactured desiccant. So this comes right out of a product, it's something that I pulled right out of the lab. And right next to it is from a, a similar type of product, a competitive product, with a similar desiccant that's about six months old. And if you look at this desiccant, I'll pass it around, it's starting to clump. Like it no longer has the same consistency as new desiccant. And what's happened here is this desiccant cannot handle all the water cycling, pressure cycling. So it's starting to, to clump, eventually it'll powder. And when it powders, that gets into the air system and starts to contaminate brake valves. You start to get failures of things like automated transmission shifters, EGR dosers, standard brake valves. So, you know, one of the things that we get as a benefit with remanufactured desiccant is the resistance to water and pressure cycling is actually enhanced because that, that process itself raises the crush strength. And there's some terminology we use that we won't get into, but this has a very high resistance to water overall, right? And even good desiccant, like what's here is a global brand. I mean, this isn't made in somebody's garage shop. It's a, it's a decent product, primarily used in other functions outside of trucking. So within a couple of months, this stuff started to fall apart. Brand new, it worked fine. So if you took this right out of the box, put it on a test stand, it will test the same as the Bendix, but a few months into it, this is what starts to happen. So, you know, one of our goals with this GC is we have a brand new aftermarket product at a lower price, you know, for people out of warranty who want to save some money, and it uses the remanufactured desiccant. So we know we have a good quality product, we control it, it's made in our factory, it's not a buy-sell like a lot of these value products. So when you buy this product from us, you save some money, but you also get the performance. And since we've been remanufacturing Deskin for 20 years, we've got a pretty good track record on that. So that's something new for us. Before, a year ago, if I would have been here, we just had the two products. So this is now a third option. And we see a lot of interest in it because there's a lot of trucks you know, out of warranty on the road. And about half the trucks today now have a spin-on cartridge. You know, about half still have this type of 89. But this is growing every year. All your new trucks out there have, have this type of a driver. Not all of them, but the majority. If you move along from these standard cartridges, what you're seeing more and more of in standard on trucks today, you've started to see it probably about five or six years ago, is an oil coalescing cartridge. So first off, what is oil coalescing, right? So this is the oil coalescing version of this type of a cartridge. It also has the 39 millimeter interface. It's the same size. It has almost the same amount of desiccant inside it, but we add an additional filtration level which is the oil coalescer, which is basically a fiberglass media. And as the air enters the cartridge, the oil aerosols are collected. And over time, they start to gather in volume, right? And when they get heavy enough, 
that oil drips to the bottom of this where it gets exhausted during the purge cycle. And so it does two functions. One, the oil coalescer is before the desiccant, and that's part of what our PureGuard product does that's unique. It's a patented design. So oil coalescing protects the desiccant itself from oil contamination, and two, it keeps oil from getting into the system of the truck, right? So when we talk to fleets and they have problems with AMT shifters failing, EGR valves failing, large majority of the time it's because oil contamination is getting into those solenoids. And solenoids are very sensitive to that type of contamination because you have a sliding bearing in there and sometimes that plugs up. So these oil coalescing filters have become really common now. I mean, most of the truck brands here either standardize on it or are close to standardizing it. As you see more and more emission controls and automation, these oil coalescing cartridges are becoming really common, right? So these standard products, there's still a lot of them out there. They're not going away anytime soon. But if you look at probably 2019 and later, almost all trucks on the road will have this type of a cartridge. So the first question I always get asked is, well, how do you tell the difference, right? It's really difficult because they all have the same size, same form factor, same interface. Well, what we do to try to help designate our PureGuard cartridges is we put this medallion on top of the cartridge. So a lot of our truck always paint the chassis, the dryer, so you don't always get to see what's on it. So, you know, unfortunately, the fleet looks at these things and it's very confusing uh, what to replace it. But this is a way to tell you that your truck came with oil coalescing and we tell people, of course, to replace it with a similar kind of product. Now with that, you've got a lot of choices, right? If you're using a spin-on cartridge, not only do you have us, we have other OEs and we have a lot of other value products out there. So, of course, lots of choices are typically good, but it can also be confusing. So I have three simple rules I tell fleets, dealers. And the first one is if your truck came with oil coalescing, you need to replace with oil coalescing, especially if it's under warranty. Even if it's out of warranty, though, you want to consider, you know, keep using an oil coalescing product because the things that this is protecting on the truck are still there after warranty. You have an AMT shifter, if that goes down, that's a $3,000 repair. An EGR doser goes down, that's about a $1,000 repair. And one of the things we are concerned about sometimes is people will take an oil coalescing filter out and they'll try to save money and they'll go to a value brand or a standard cartridge and then you're exposing yourself. So, you know, what we like to tell people is if your truck has, especially if it's a newer truck, has a lot of emission controls, if you have an AMT on your truck, you got to use an oil coalescing. Almost any truck with an AMT specifies this. So that's the first rule. The second one is if your truck has a standard air dryer or even a competitive oil coalescing air dryer cartridge and you're having problems, you're having failures, you're having contamination in products, we get questions like this all the time on the tech side. We tell people the easiest fix is just to replace it or to upgrade it with a pure guard. And you know, many times we have big fleets come to us, they've got, they've got some significant problems of failures. They'll try a couple of these and the majority of time that takes the oil out of the system that caused the contamination. So what I like to tell people is it's a cost benefit thing because these do cost more money than a standard one. But if you're having problems, you know, even with our standard cartridge or competitor's cartridge or competitor's oil coalescing, if you if you spend the extra money and you go to the PureGuard, that will almost always take care of those contamination issues. It's a pretty safe bet. And then the last one is, if you do have an older truck with a spin-on cartridge, you've had it for years, it works fine, right? But you want to save some money. Maybe you've been buying the Bendix OE product. So the GC is available now at a, at a lower price than our OE grade. It's great for trucks that are a little bit older. And this way, you know, you still get the Bendix product. If you have an issue, you know who to call and you know what's inside. So you don't have to worry about the desiccant falling apart, you know, a few months into operation. All right, well, then, well, thank you very much.